Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths, Weird and Wonderful. And I've been looking forward to doing this one for some time because I first uh, subscribed and downloaded and was messing about uh, with this vehicle some time ago. Uh, and there's a lot to talk about it because it kind of really stands out. Um, I feel like on the workshop and just in the Weird and Wonderful and everything. Uh, so, what is this thing? This is the BBS 5th Season by Bungalow Bill, and it is an Onyx Watch faction build, a fan build, if you will. Uh, and I've reviewed stuff like uh, this before, I've done, like, there's a... what was it? It was like the like the Dragon, that was a Deepwater Guard a fan build, and that was awesome. And this is also awesome, but for somewhat different reasons. Well, uh, firstly, it looks good, you can, it's very Onyx Watchy, just from the outside. Uh, but what's really weird, uh, well, I mean, weird, this one isn't weird, but there's a lot of wonderful in there. But it's the kind of wonderful that makes you grind your teeth a little bit, because it's like, oh, it's so good! It's so good, and, uh, I'm so bad in comparison. And you might be thinking, huh? What? Onyx Watch. How bad could it be? Or how good could it be? Um, so, the story behind this thing is... Uh, as Bungalowville writes in the description uh, of this item on the workshop, it's basically an anti-air build, uh, but it's an anti-airship build specifically. It's basically, okay, faction-wise, how does the Onyx Watch uh, defend itself against the uh, Grey Talons, those big scary airships? Well, this is the answer. It is an anti-airship uh, anti uh, battleship, or cruiser, or whatever the hell naval, naval categorizations are. So I thought, okay, so it's designed to do that. Let's see what it can do. And it's one of those wonderful builds is uh, like, I underestimated this thing completely. I looked and thought, okay, so it looks like it could be, it looks like it could be something. And then it was like, during the testing, it was like, oh, oh, okay then, this thing is actually really formidable. So, uh, to give you an idea of what kind of things this thing can beat, and uh, these names may or may not mean anything uh, to you, depending on how much you've watched the channel, and how much you've uh, delved into the Faction Crafter from the Depths. But anyway, here's a list of things that I have tested against this uh, exact vehicle, and it has uh, wiped the floor with them. So, the list is, uh, of my ships, uh, the Komodo-class battleship, which... Uh, couldn't beat anything in the Finest Hour campaign, which I did a playthrough of. Uh, it can beat the Stahlslung Mark II, uh, which can handle most of what Neater uh, can possibly throw at you. Not all, but most. Uh, it beats the Bigasaurus, uh, which I built specifically to counter the Megalodon. Uh, and it can beat the Stronghold, which is the Onyx Watch uh, boss vehicle. And it can beat uh, the Megalodon, which is, like, quite a legendarily formidable craft. Uh, and it can beat the Black Current, uh, which is uh, probably the most powerful submarine in the Nita campaign. And this thing isn't even designed for that. The shells aren't super capitation. And it has, uh, well, sneak peek of the insides. It has anti-air mantlets in there. It can't aim down properly, and it can still beat the Black Current. And it can beat the Imperion, uh, which is the Great Talon's godly, uh, well, like, super godly, the boss craft. And it can beat the Singularity, which is supposed to be one of the most powerful uh, craft in Neater. And it can handle two kobolds at once. So this is, might very well be one of the most formidable things I've ever featured on Weird and Wonderful. And what's amazing is... There's no mention of that in the workshop description. It's just, Bungalow Bill says, this thing is designed to take on Grey Talon's airships. Which is a bit of a warning uh, head, uh, just head up. Like, because Grey Talon's airships are can be very strong and scary. But it can do so much more than that. This is a wonderful example of somebody creating something amazing and not even knowing what they've done. Uh, so... It's very impressive, and I b believe me, I will be showing off how this thing kicks tremendous ass. Uh, but how does it do it? The short answer is, it's the guns. It has uh, eight... Uh, what caliber are these? Uh, eight 433mm uh, cannons uh, in two turrets, 
very well armored, and those shells are terrifyingly strong. Like, ridiculously strong. In fact, to give you an idea of how strong uh, these shells are, this is a, a test fortress I made specifically uh, for uh, figuring out how to defend yourself against these guns, because that's how strong they are. They're in a class of their own. So, uh, it has a party mix of uh, guns, uh, but this is, I guess, the most basic one. It is a uh, it is a semi penetrator, uh, but it's a railgun, a big one. Four hundred thirty-three millimeters takes uh, fifty-two thousand six hundred ninety-seven railgun draw. Uh, it is a eight meter shell, and the result of that is is that it does uh, thirty-three thousand seven hundred nineteen kinetic damage with an AP value of fifty-five point nine, and the KD times AP is like almost 2 million, 1,000, uh, uh, 1,884,673, uh, and the explosive damage is basically just, you know, the spice on top of the uh, scary, uh, fighty cake, 5,693, and, like, this isn't the only shell it's got, I'll show you the other ones, but to give you an idea of just how strong this damn thing is, here's one of many armor designs, uh, I was, uh, experimenting with. Uh, this can go straight through 20 meters of metal, so you do all the math of the KD and the, that's not metal, uh, of the, just all the, you know, the, how much kinetic damage it does and the AP and stuff like that, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Whee! Okay, so this is gonna go straight through all that, so... Bang. Rather, it takes... Yes, so that's 20 meters of metal. It got through it. And if anything had been right on the end of this, uh, it would have been vaporized. So, these are ridiculously strong. And it is a very potent reminder to me and everyone else, but mostly me, is that railguns are ridiculous. And they're probably overall the most powerful weapon type in the game. Because, like... I can't think of anything else except maybe a huge heat missile that can go straight through 20 meters of metal like it's absolutely nothing. Like, you cannot sensibly armor against uh, something like this. Like, you have to do start doing interesting tricks uh, with ERA and like just, you know, you have to build your craft specifically to counter this, uh, like from the ground up, which will make it more vulnerable to other things, but yeah. As for the turret armor, it's a uh, no joke as well. So, I've been told now, back and forth, flip-flopping, is that the like, poles are not as bad as I said they are, and pe that they are as bad, etc, etc. Uh, this thing has a non-stop kinetic proofing in here, so you see lots of wedges at the front, heavy armor. Uh, so, pretty much maximum kinetic uh, protection uh, on its own turret, and it has uh, heavy armor poles, two layers, uh, to function as volume-free uh, air gaps, like, just from the front and just from above, because, like, you can't really aim wedges above. And it has a nice, big, uh, hollow air gap just above on its turret there, which is where all the detectors are uh, stuck. The detectors themselves are not really protected that well, um, which is one of the few, I guess one of the few weaknesses of this, uh, is that you can probably blind it fairly easily. Uh, at least with the stuff that's on the turrets, uh, but yeah. But the cunning part here is I think the surge protectors down here will pull EMP surges away uh, from uh, the sensors on top, which I think is it's pretty clever actually. So that's uh, the gun. This I believe it is four connection Tetris in there. It looks like it. Yes. Yeah, so we hit P. We can see. Yep, that is four connection Tetris right there. Yeah connection in there and it has uh, the uh, this is actually a kind of a clever thing actually oh it's got an it's got empty space in there because it just doesn't care um, but yeah so this is apparently uh, not apparently no one told me this I'm kind of reasoning uh, if you're gonna put the local weapon controller on something it's might actually be better to put it on top of the turret block because if you do what I do and put it behind um, that actually makes it weirdly more vulnerable. It can get sniped out from underneath more easily. Whereas if you do this, uh, the turret itself needs to be taken down before that gets off. Which is uh, slightly better, I think. And um, 
Perhaps not the best use of space in here because like, or just, I don't know if this is good or bad. This, this vehicle is full of stuff like that. It's got empty space in here. It don't care. It don't care. None whatsoever. Very interesting. And it's just, you know, it's just got this in here because why not? And yes, let's look at the actual thing over here again. And then we'll go uh, get it to bully the Stahl Slung Mark II, which I think I've I've uh, retrofitted um, to use AP AP frag instead of just regular like you know airburst frag, specifically because of this thing. Also because this uh, actually has pretty cunning armor design. Um, so if you shrink the blocks, you see it's very onyx watchy. There's a nice big air gap here, and then there's a central uh, citadel over here, which is just. The armor gets thicker the deeper you go, and this air gap, and these air gaps, it really doesn't matter if they get ruptured or not. Thick layers of metal, alloy to help it float, it's got poles, I don't really think it's a good idea to arrange poles this way. Um, like, I don't, I don't know. Here's the thing about armor, I give up. I don't know armor, I just futz around, like, I don't know armor anymore. I thought I did, but now I don't. Everyone has confused me to the point. I'm never making armor tutorials ever again. It's too hard. It's broken my heart too many times. But this is, a, I'd say this is pretty solid armor. It takes a real beating in particular. Um, this kind of thing of having a double layer deck and then a layer of poles is something I really want to experiment with. I have no idea if it's good. Because like I said, I don't know anything anymore. I just watch what people do and go, oh, that's interesting. Uh, because it functions as an air gap and it also... Uh, kinetic uh, shells coming in flat um, will kind of have a little bit of reduction there if they hit the edge of any one of these poles which is kind of nice actually like unlike a slope which you'll need to orientate uh, one way or the other uh, this is very dependent on direction unlike a wedge uh, which you probably need to orientate well even more so very dependent on direction uh, these are just kind of all-round proofing, I guess. And also because uh, shots like in here probably come from like angles. I don't know. Like it'll get armor stacking bonuses anyway. Like I said, I don't know anything. I don't even know what I'm talking. This is completely unprotected because screw you. What are you even going to do? Um, uh, like, what else can we talk about? The cram mortars on this thing because it has mortars. It actually has a quite scary mortars. I was testing... Um, I have a test craft... Uh, which I was just messing around with armor designs, uh, seeing uh, how long I can make something survive against this thing. The answer is about seven minutes, and that's for something that is entirely made of armor, and that's it. And uh, But this, let's have a look at this. This is actually kind of significant, because it's uh, AP, it's APHE uh, cram mortar, and that's it. Time from first impact. And this goes straight through... Uh, pretty much all decks that I've built, so anything that doesn't have a really decent deck or has a just nice big space armor with its deck, uh, these mortars are going to punch straight through it, and uh, I've seen them do it. Uh, so enough gabbing on, let's show you just how dangerous this thing is. Let's uh, have multiple fights. Let's go to our custom battle simulator, in which case this thing has a setup all on its own. And so there it is, the fifth season, and I'm gonna chuck it against the Star Slung Mark II, and you get, and we'll watch the Star Slung Mark II. And this does have a slight material advantage, um, but like it really, it's it's a real ass kicking. Those rail guns are terrifying. And oh bollocks, I didn't show you the kind of shells it has. Oh, I'll show. No worries, I'll show you when it fires them at me. <laughs> no worries. Uh, let's go here. So what's that? That's our friend, uh, the Stully. She's gonna do her best. She's firing a cram. And over here, BBS 5th uh, Season is gonna let rip with um, uh, what kind of shell she's back in. So this is something I didn't know you could do. And it turns out this is horrifyingly effective. This is APEMP. Which I remember long ago was something I tried using and then was told, nah, it doesn't work. Um, uh, it works now. It works with APS, I can tell you that. This will deliver EMP jolts well inside the target. 
anything it doesn't manage to penetrate, uh, it will absolutely just fry your AI from the inside out. And remember that the Star Slung is no slouch when it comes to heavy armor, multiple layers of armor thickness. And yeah, we've already down 0.3% health. This is what it does. It delivers that EMP jolt inside the friggin' target. And where else? What else has happened? It might have knocked out a turret immediately. Nope, it didn't do that, thankfully. I think the next one has, though. Uh, yep, so that is a problem. Uh, that shell has put a hole... Where's the, where's the entry wound? You can't even tell. Um... So you can see there, I think we're going to see vital components uh, dropping off. Yeah, so uh, laser munitions. The laser munition, the laser systems are right in the middle of that. They're behind like a layer of heavy armor as well. These guns don't care. They genuinely do not. And those EMP jolts are coming from inside the freaking Stalls Lung and it's, it's so rough. Let's see if the, those shells are going to miss, so bravo, Starly. Also, they're going to collide, because why not? Yep, and that turret has been shut off. Yep, 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 doesn't care. I used to be proud of the, the armoring on these turrets, and now I'm less so. And yes, that is rams on the style slung. I've added those recently. It's probably not going to do much. Nope, it's not, because it's going to miss. It's even now, but it's going to stop being... I think the engines got taken out. Oh yeah, you managed to... Yeah, so uh, these mantlets, uh, they're decoration. <laughs> they are decoration. They're... Not real. I looked at those and thought, oh, you've stuck the mantlets on the outside your turret, you dummy. Uh, nope. As it turns out, I was the dummy. Looks like we... Yep, we didn't manage to do... Anything. Nope, that turret is still secure. That is spaced citadel armor for you. So now it's going to be all over bar the screaming now that we've lost the angling and it's going to fire railgun shells uh, straight into our guts. Although, what did that do? That didn't do anything by the looks of it. What did that do? Did that do anything? I don't think so. Nope, it did nothing. This is actually way more even uh, than I uh, than the first time. And that right there is why those AP EMP shells are so terrifying. It doesn't help that uh, the... Yeah, I think... Yep, this was the AI compartment. It's gone. It's right gone. So this actually takes advantage of the fact that people tend to wrap their AI in heavy armor. Because the shell whistles in. It goes... Where the hell is the entry wound for there? Here it is. Um, so it goes in there. And... If this was any other material, if it was metal or stone or whatever, the shell would just penetrate straight through and out the other side. Nope. By then, it's run out of kinetic energy and it fries everything. So, that was less than two minutes. It was just, you know, just over a minute. And what I thought was one of my best ships is like, gone, dead. Gone, dead, and gone and dead. So, let's uh, show you that again. Uh, this time, uh, let's see if Meg from Accounting can do any better. Spoiler alert, she won't. <laughs> uh, let's go here, neater. Uh, where is it? Meg from Accounting is... We... We... There she is. There she is. She's got a material advantage, even. So she's got, what is it, like 400,000 materials uh, or more. Uh, advantage on the fifth season doesn't even matter dude does not even matter she'll kill it because that very thick hull armor on the megalodon it's not enough it is actually not enough uh, to um, stop those railgun shells 
And uh, the armor design uh, on the fifth season is actually perfect uh, for countering uh, the uh, hollow point shells that the Megalodon uses because it's a lot of spaced armor. So it's going to be trading blows. It looks even so far. Uh, but then you get stuff like this. It's just those shells get right in there. They get right in there and they start doing... Yeah, this is this is angled. This is how deep that went. It's like, count the beam. So, uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven of them, and the only reason it wasn't twenty is because of the angling. So, uh, yeah, this is a, this is this is ridiculous. Megalodon might lose more blocks early on, but. Yeah, that is what you think it was. That was an EMP jolt delivered inside that turret. You can't really defend against that, can you? And I think that was a shell that went straight through the Megalodon and actually detonated on the inside. Uh, on the inside hull on the other side, yeah? Yep, here it is. It hit this heavy armor beam on the other side of the Megalodon. It went through who knows how many layers. And don't forget about the mortars, because they're still there. And yeah, they're going straight through it. So let's see if the... Alright, so the Star Slung was murdered in uh, about a minute. Now let's see how long the Meg lasts. Uh, not long, I'm guessing. Yep, that rear turret has been knocked out. That was an EMP jolt. Those... Those AP EMP railguns, man. Those... They're ridiculous. They are ridiculously strong. And here's the thing. They don't feel overpowered. That's just taking advantage of how the game works. That's how... That's how... Yep, and... The, yeah, the, the fifth season tends to do that. She does decapitate turrets like it's no one's business. It's just... Yeah, those are just how strong APS guns can get. That's how strong rail guns can get. And she almost hit the Megalodon with mortars, which is not easy, by the way, because the Megalodon does go at a, at quite a pace. Yeah, two out of two out of main turrets down. Oh, she's lasted more than a minute, so she has lasted longer than the Star Slung. Yeah, this is uh, it's like I firmly encourage you to, um, to download the, the BBS fifth season because this is a very good yardstick for. Um, armor and protection. This actually makes me want to start learning how to use shield projectors again because uh, the power of these guns, it, it, like the difference between one shot and two shot is one shot might cripple you, two shots will kill you. Like, you need to do stuff like use internal shields or stuff like that. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's like, man, gotta workshop it a lot more. And if you're wondering, is this affecting, like, how I'm going to be designing the Stall Slung Mark III? Because I am working on that. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> that is absolutely affecting how I'm going to be designing uh, the Stall E3. Um, because uh, the, that gun... If, if you can defend yourself against uh, these kinds of uh, cannons, uh, you're probably good. You're probably good for everything, actually. So yeah, like, Megalodon's not doing very well. She's crippled. Like, all main guns are down. And, let's see, is, uh, stuff getting right into the juicy bits? I think it is. D did I mention these are not even super cavitation shells? They're just so fast that, um, yeah, there goes the ammo compartment by the looks of it. And now that the Meg is immobilized, uh, the mortars are gonna have a, are gonna have a field day, because she's, she's a sitting duck. Basically, what the mortars are for. Let's go down in here. Right, so here's the AI compartment. If this gets hit, it's over. And they can get hit. Quite easily, as a matter of fact. Yeah, this fight is basically over. Uh, because the Meg isn't fighting back anymore. Uh, man. This is a very strong, very strong ship. You've done a very good job, Bug of Uh... Let's see. AI dead yet? Nope. Not yet. But yeah, this... this Let's go have a look at uh, what damage the fifth season has taken, because she, she's down 4% health. Against a craft that is more expensive than she is, 
And uh, yeah, do you see her main turrets? Basically, basically untouched. She's lost a few bits here and there. She's, uh, yeah, she's lost blocks here, there, and everywhere. But, yeah, like, not even... She's she's not fast. She's still mostly intact. And uh, she's just wailing away. Like, she does burn through materials very quickly, but, like... Like, she saves so much just by killing things quickly. Uh, that's one way to be efficient, is just kill things uh, really fast. And you'll probably... Yeah, you'll probably save a lot of money in the long run. It's like, you can spend... Uh, you can spend uh, 10 materials a minute and, uh, like, take 10 minutes, or you can spend 100 materials a minute and take 30 seconds, and, like, you know, you can do the math on that one. Meg is actually... Uh, she is holding... She is, like... Well, I wonder if she'll last five minutes. What was that mortar shell? Come on, now. Yeah, so... Right there, uh, that mortar went... Ooh, where'd that go? It went... Yeah, it went pretty deep. I think it went through, like, multiple layers of stuff. Yeah, any moment now, there's gonna be a fun little... Oh, jeez, entire sections of deck are just falling away. Yep, there's another turret. Yeah, just... Can we just appreciate now that this that the fifth season is behind the Megalodon? It fired a shot, like at the stern. It went straight through all the way uh, to the forward turret and decapitated it. Like, I hate railguns. I should start using them more so I learn to love them. But this this is like this is. Whew. Ooh boy, this is all over by the screaming. Think, but like, maybe I should just stop it now. We get it. This is, this is basically just. This is not a fight video. This is, uh, I don't even know. What is this? This is sadism. Watching the poor Meg. I, this, the the fifth season, is so strong, is so like you know, so, you know, ugh trying to think of good words and I can't because I'm speechless. So strong that it's making me feel sorry for the Megalodon. Like, the Bigasaurus didn't make me feel that way. The Bigasaurus was like, haha, yes, I've done it. This is like, oh my word. This frightens me dead. So yeah, you get the idea. The Meg is not recovering from this. So last but not least, let's uh, show off what this thing does to the Singularity because it is similarly messy. And the Singularity, like, me need I remind you, is a frontsider. It's, like, supposed to hard counter anything that broadsides like this, except... Uh, yeah, there is a certain level of, uh, of broadside, which apparently you just can't handle, mate. And the Singularity is specifically designed to resist uh, powerful kinetic attacks from the front. And she can't keep it up. Not against this thing. So yeah, let's see here. Let's see. I might have to speed up the footage a little bit, but yeah. I'll show you how long it takes for the fifth season to kill the Singularity, because uh, I've tested her twice now. She's managed it both times. So from here, let's see here. She's got smoke defense, so lasers don't really do much. And immediately, um... Yeah, the fifth season is taking a bit of damage because the Singularity also has, uh, has really strong guns. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, see that? Whoa, th that was like... What did that do? Uh, yeah, see that conga line of, of, uh, heavy armor, including, including wedges? Yeah, she just took out, like... What the hell did that even do? That went... That must have gone right to the front. Or the underside. I can't even tell- where did that hit? Oh, it hit here. Yep, it took out... Oh, yeah. It went- it's got- it's already getting, like, really close uh, to the custom- uh, to the custom jets that are keeping the Singularity in the air and moving. 
So that was the first, like, that was the first or second volley that did that. Yep, and yeah, so, uh... So remember the, like, some of you might remember me saying that large gauge APS doesn't work against the Singularity because lambs? I always forget about the railguns. I forget about the ridiculously strong railguns. And yeah, the lambs managed to zap, uh... One or two of them, but like those shells have a lot of health and they move really fast. Actually, the singularity is winning right now. Could this be the one? Could the Snig actually take on the fifth season and win? Uh, given that the amount of smoke that's falling off, I don't think. So. Yeah, that looked important. What was that? That looked important. That's laser connectors. Uh, the lambs in the front uh, keeps. Uh, keeps getting, sh like, bits taken out of it. The fifth season has, a uh, spaced armor to spare, so let's see. Let's, uh, let's track the snake. Uh-oh, that's bad. Yep, that's bad. That's, uh, more laser components. She's already past one minute, so she's done much better than the stall slung. Uh... Yep, that looks like... What was that? That looks like... Uh, okay, that looks really important. I see laser components. Okay, so it's just laser components for now. No, never mind. She's into the APS compartment. She is into the APS compartment, and she's having a mod. Oh no! I saw, I saw shots go through the singularity. That's not right. That shouldn't be possible. The singularity might like it's even hit points right now, but at this point, um. Uh, the fifth season has more redundancy, like, there's a few critical components on the Singularity that if they get destroyed that year, uh oh, that's bad. She just warped, uh, which means her warp drive got destroyed, I think. Uh, she does that. It's, oh, it's still very even in the hit points. Let's go see what the fifth season's up to. Is she down? Okay, so she's taken shots to her face, but, uh... Oh, yeah, one of the main guns is damaged, but not damaged enough. Most of her guns are still firing. Oh, and she's got a, she's got a lot of redundant blocks. Lots of the... Yep, she's starting to win. She's starting to win the hit point race. Oh, my goodness. This win wonderful is just turning into, like, a, who can stop this thing? Actually, if you, um... If you have a craft that is roughly the same cost and size as the fifth season and can take her on head-to-head -head and beat her, do let me know, and then put her on the workshop to help us poor plebs, because uh, we need the help, frankly. Oh boy, this fight's making me hungry! Gosh dang! Oh boy, oh boy, I should have had lunch, but I couldn't. There was too much from the depths to do. Uh, let's see, yeah, okay, so the singularity, let's see. Yep, okay, so three out of four guns are still firing. Uh, oh, still pretty even hit points. Still pretty even. Oh, another warp. Oh, she's starting to be... Wo she's starting to wobble. She's starting to wobble. Oh, now she's winning, though. She's managed to hit something important. This is tense. This is very tense, actually. Maybe the Snig will get lucky. She didn't get lucky the last two times I put these two against each other. It all depends on who disables the other's weapons first. Oh, that is less railgun. That's less railgun. Fifth season might actually lose this for once. And I do say for once. Come on, Snig, you can do it. Should have spawned you in your home team colors. Uh oh, that's bad. Um, uh, the, the, the fifth season just caught up considerably because that's like most of the ring shields gone. Oh dear. Oh dearie me. Oh dearie, 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 dearie me indeed. I think it's all, I think she's only got one railgun left. And it looks like it's not doing full damage either. Let's go have a look. Let's go have a look at the season. 
And she's losing blocks. Okay, wow, the one time I recorded, looks like the Singularity might actually win. Oh, yeah, she's down one main gun. She's got... Yeah, she's got three guns left. Which is the same amount as the, as the Snig, actually. Let's see, let's have a look at you for a second. Yeah, because the, the guns on the Singularity are no joke, either. They hurt. They hurt a lot, in fact. In fact, she's sinking. She might actually sink. Let's see, is a block confetti still falling? Oh, yes it is. Oh, that looked painful. What was that? Oh, yep, more laser components. Oh, boy. Uh, there are a few repair bots on the fifth season I should hasten to mention, so she can repair herself a little bit. Um, yeah, mother of goodness. Like, being able to, like, to give you an idea is like... Hold on. To give you an idea... Like, the Singularity is almost 2 million materials. It has a huge material advantage of this, and this is a pretty even fight. And it's a front side. And it side stripes at 70 meters per second, so... Whew. This is a fight and a half, let me tell ya. Let me tell ya, weird and wonderfuls are usually kind of brief, but uh, this is exciting. Alright, there can be only one victor. This one we've got to uh, let go through, so I think at this point I'm going to speed up time and we'll see who despawns first. Okay, I'm cutting back in now because it looks like the last turret on the fifth season has been disabled. It's still aiming, uh, but the, that gun's not really firing. And this thing has been completely blinded. It can't see the Singularity Shooter, so the Snig has actually done it. Uh, but don't let that uh, put you off like just how amazingly formidable this thing is. I'm very impressed. And uh, like I said, this is, the, this is the third time I've had it fight uh, the Singularity, and this is the first and only time so far that the Singularity has won. Uh, the fifth season has knocked it clean out of the air the first two times, uh, with a substantial uh, amount of health remaining, so... Yeah, it's very impressive, like... Well done, Bungalow Bill. Uh, probably uh, gonna be sure to check out your other stuff on the workshop, because, like... Uh, if it's as impressive as this, like, it's, I will be more impressed. But yeah, so, that's a bit of a weird, weird one, full, quite a long one, actually, because I had to show off this thing doing its thing. And thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps, and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters, and thank you Bungalow Bill for making this wonderful craft and putting it out on the workshop for us to enjoy. And I'll see you next time in From the Depths. Weird and wonderful. Farewell.